Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today we are in, you're probably like, where the hell are you? Like, you've been showing these new reptile rooms. Well, we're in one of them. <laughs> this is what's eventually going to be our cleaning room and our baby room, seeing so we got our sink, for some of them to fight the hookups on there, but we do have our really cool hose, uh, and then this will have this really cool sprayer when I'm all done, so I can go clean and hook the hose right to there. Anyway, tub wash station. That's all off topic. That's just something I'm really excited about, because I'll tell you what, if you have access to spray water instead of having to, like, lug water... Oh my God, your life is so much easier, just quicker. Uh, but what we're going to do today is, obviously you've been seeing a lot of live cutting videos, which was really exciting, but all those babies crawl out and you see how we set them up and they're at the old house, but then they're going to start to shed. Actually, one of them has at the making of this video, which is, what, is giving us to get this done. And as they shed out, they're going to move to the new house. So we need to get a rack ready for them. So what we're using today is the animal plastics rack. And you're saying, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you do all tall grass racks. Yes, I do, but I'm also a big believer that uh, if something's not broke, don't fix it. So we did have these. We were able to get these. We actually bought them from uh, Tall Grass Reptiles when they retired them to go to all their own kind. So, <laughs> so we are using these older animal plastic racks. They do just fine for the hatchlings. However, if you look right here by Kurt, we will be using a lot of TGR in here as well and in there. But the nice thing about this rack is there was exactly 40 tubs. I'm going to be gone for two weeks and Kurt will probably fill up about 39 of these tubs while I'm gone. So it's nice to set this one up and be like, let her rip dude while I'm not here. That way he could just knock himself out and let it go. So we thought we'd show you how we set up uh, a baby rack. We set up a baby rack similar to how we set up any rack and we do do ours a little bit different than most. So that's why we wanted to share it with you today. There's already a couple things we did before we got the camera running because you'd probably find it really boring to watch. But this tub right here, yes, should give myself a little more slack on there, I'm seeing. So we'll go ahead and do that while I got you on here. And that is just a matter of threading the cord a little bit more. There we go. And of course, these cords are not how they're always going to remain. We're still kind of doing setup. So this is the main, what I call, always call my control tub. And this is how we set up our thermostat probe. So this runs to our Herbstat 6 and probe slot number 3, if anybody's curious, not that that really matters. But the way we do this is we like to keep our probe in our tub. Why? Well, if I set my probe to 90 degrees, I know it's 90 degrees. I want to know what the temperature is where my snake's going to be laying. If it's laying on top of that probe, it's going to be 90 degrees. That's what's important to me. I don't really give a shit what the temperature is on my heat mat, under my tub, I don't care. I wanna know what it is in the tub and that's what I wanna control. Uh, a lot of people don't do this and I understand the thought process and I'll explain the pros and cons. There's good and bad to everything, right? Uh, and I'll explain how we try to alleviate the cons. A lot of people like to put their probe right on top of the heat. The concern is it won't get too hot that way. Uh, the problem is if your ambient temperature changes in your room at all, or anything changes your temperatures are not going to be off because they're setting their thermostat to like 104 to get the temperature in the tub at 90 having to double check that with other thermometers to make sure they got it set right because it's set to 104 and it seems like a big convoluted mess i put my probe where i want it to be i set it to the temperature i want it to be the scary part is if this probe moves off the heat then you're going to be running straight heat because if it's clear up here it gets knocked out whatever you're going to have problems. There's a few things you can't do. You should never tape a probe down. Using tape is a big, big no-no. The reason is tape can come undone. It can stick to your snake and that can cause you all sorts of problems. I have seen a lot of people who do do a similar method. Use hot glue. That'll work okay. I've also gone through and seen a lot of people who hot glue things down in these tubs like this for water dishes. We had some of that you've probably seen. I hate them. Some of them are really strong. Some of them, like that one, aren't that strong. So hot glue can get weak over time, lead to failure. That's why we're removing all those. Uh, and you can see, I mean, like, that one's off on its own. I didn't have to do it. So, like, not a big fan of the hot glue. Here's what we do. We take, we melt a hole with a soldering iron, just big enough to fit the probe through, okay? We run the probe through there. We then melt two smaller holes there. We run a small zip tie. Make sure the end is on the inside. You're probably saying, well, Matt, isn't that a scratch hazard? Wouldn't you want that on the outside? You would think. But here's the problem. When you do that, it won't always slide over things with heat tape and it's going to catch and scratch and rub. We don't want that. We want this nice smooth bottom still. As you can see with this lip, 
that's never going to rub on your heat cable, never going to rub on your heat cord, never going to cause you problems. A bump on there could bump into that and eventually tear into it. This is not that scratchy, not a big deal. You cut the end off. If it is a little sharp, you can just take your uh, soldering iron and just kind of melt that down where it's not got a sharp edge. No problem. By doing that, that probe cannot back out. It can't come more forward than that. It's going to hit that edge and get stuck. It can't really move side to side. It's locked in there. The snake is not going to break that. This is going to hold. I have never had this fail. The only failure I've ever had from this was a probe failure. I've had several probe failures, typically on the original Herbstat probes, not the stainless steel they ship with now. And what would tend to happen is when we'd lock that down, the probe would get a little bit of a shape like this to it from that coming in. It would eventually allow moisture in there and it would fail. If I took the probe out, swapped it out, let it dry out, it would actually start to work again. The stainless steel, no freaking problems. So uh, kudos to Herbstat for making everything that stainless steel now, I do believe. But that's how we do it. And it's been extremely successful for us. Does that mean you have to do it that way? No. If you don't like that and you want to stick it straight on whatever, dude, you do you. But this is going to work. Trust me. I know the internet says if you put your probe in your tub, you're going to kill all your snakes. I know that. I know it. I know it says that on certain Facebook groups. I know it says a lot of things. I'm going to tell you they are wrong. If you do it my way, you're not going to kill your snakes. If you do it like a dumbass, you may. This way, you won't. Really simple. Now, this is going to be for hatchlings that have already shed. So since they've already shed, we keep hatchlings that haven't shed on uh, paper towels. The reason we do that is they're just a little more sensitive. We want to keep it pretty moist. We want to give them the excellent opportunity to have a good shed. And once they have that first shed, then we go ahead and we move them to substrate. I do think substrate is important for a ball python. I'm not a fan of a lifelong time on paper towels. I just don't think that simulates what we want to simulate. I don't think it holds humidity well, uh, especially for my females. You know, like, we obviously do a lot of minimalistic stuff. We run racks. We do all that kind of stuff. But I'll tell you, uh, there are certain behaviors I look for. Every female I have that lays will get into this substrate, or they got into the aspen back in the old days, or they got into the uh, reptichip when I was using a reptichip. Uh, doesn't really matter what you're using. They're going to typically create a nest in there. So they're going to actually nest into that substrate. They do that to kind of build that up on the sides, helps keep them in there, helps keep the eggs together. Uh, I don't know exactly all the reasons why they choose to do that, but trust me, they pretty much all do do that. If I'm running just paper towels, guess what my females can't do? They can't nest. So I think it leads to a more stressful laying. I think it leads to, uh, in general, probably more egg binding. I mean, snakes typically will lay anyway, but all those animals are going to look for the right spot and the comfortable place to have those eggs. Think about chameleons that will egg bind if you don't give them a place to lay that's proper. So I am a big believer in give them a little substrate. And so you can say, well, then why don't you uh, just give your female substrate? Well, I suppose I could do that. But I also believe that if my females tend to like substrate, how oh, come I missed that paper towel? Then uh, my males will tend to also like substrate. So I give every ball python substrate. Just kind of a personal preference. Uh, my preference is coconut for these babies. The reason is, and I like this better than the reptichip here. The Echo Earth would also be preferred for me over the Reptichip with hatchlings. The simple purpose is it's small pieces. So if they swallow a little bit of this, they should not impact. They should poop it out. I say should. Anything is possible. I always worry with the thicker pieces that it could cause them some more issues. Uh, now that being said, I have never had it happen. I never lost a baby to Reptichip. This isn't me saying don't use that or anything like that. Use what works for you. This is simply my preference. So basically we'll go through here just like this and we'll end up doing the entire rack just putting a couple handfuls of litter in here. You just kind of want to cover the bottom with just enough that they're going to be able to hold humidity. They're going to be able to kind of dig down in there if they want and they will. Uh, they're not going to like make trails in it necessarily but they will. I mean you'll see spots they lay because they'll kind of flatten it out. They'll also uh, actually move it out of the way if they want to get down closer to the warmth. 
So I do think it does provide a little bit more natural setting for them. Just personal preference. One thing too, some people who do the probe inside the tub will say, hey, to be on the super safe side, I don't put a snake in that one tub. I'll do all the other ones, but not that one. I leave that one with just a probe, like so, so I know the snake's not going to move the probe, crawl on it, or anything like that. It's not a bad idea. Uh, we, unfortunately, we do put animals in there, simply because we need the damn space. <laughs> so, animal gets to live in the control tub. It is a little more difficult, because cleaning the control tub is always harder. Sometimes you got to remove the full probe, and you have to use more zip ties and shit like that. Not a real big deal. But, if you're going to run this control tub without an animal, here's something very important. Substrate. And you're like, what the hell? Why? Why would you put substrate in a control tub without an animal? And I have ran control tubs without animals. And usually it's the last tub I fill just because of that purpose. Uh, so why would I put substrate in there? Well, it's really simple. So you're trying to control everything, right? So what I want, and that probe is just sitting right there on the surface. You can see we're not running really deep. Uh, it'll be like about that and have a water dish in there. And what's going to happen in the current well, it's going to be cooler up there. Now when there's pressure on there, it's going to be right down almost on top of it. But this will act as an insulating layer. So if I ran this tub without any substrate at all, it's going to cool faster than the rest of these tubs that are going to have all this warm coconut and that insulating layer, meaning these tubs would end up being hotter than that one. And if I set this one to 90 and these are all hotter, then these are all too damn hot, right? So you want your control tub to have substrate in it, even if it doesn't have a baby ball python. Very important. Set it up the exact same way you set up your babies to keep that consistency. The other thing I do want to point out is the location of the control tub. And that is in the middle. There is a reason for that. So yes, there's going to be some variance in here and some variable. I don't care where you set your thermo thermostat up. You're going to have some variance and variables. That's okay. Nature's not always consistent, right? Uh, you don't want crazy variable swings. So obviously, it's going to be a little warmer at the top and a little cooler at the bottom, correct? That's just the way heat and cold works. So if I put it in the middle and I set it for the middle, then I may be a little warm here, but not too warm. A little cool down there, but not too cool. This would be the just right, but these will all be perfectly fine as well. If I set it at the top, and I may be too cool at the bottom. If I put it at the bottom, I may be a little too hot at the top. I also prefer to stick it in the middle. And that's for the same purpose. I would imagine this would be slightly warmer than the left or the right. And uh, so I stick it there in the middle, right in the center of everything, to kind of let it kind of, you know, make everything as close to what I want as possible without being too hot or too cold. Uh, so that is kind of how we do it. The other thing we are using, is you saw me ripping these out, we tried these. So they came in a lot of the tubs. I hate them. They were glued there. You put a little like jello shot glass in there. And that would work okay until this broke off. And then we tried hot gluing a jello shot glass down to the bottom and put another one in there. And that worked okay until the snake would break off the hot glue and they'd be rolling around and be a pain in the ass. It was very, very frustrating and it would piss me off. A lot. A whole lot. That's why I was so excited when we got the new TGR tubs on the uh, Vision Rack that had the built in where I could put the little shot thing in there, but it's built into the cup and it's just wonderful. But on these, we don't have that luxury, so what we're going to use is we ordered an ass load, which for the record, an ass load is exactly 40, I do believe. Is that right, Kurt? Yes. So 40 is an ass load of these ceramic tubs. Now, uh, they're nice and heavy, they're durable, they don't break very easy. That was my ring hitting against it, not it breaking, see? Uh, they're really kind of a nice looking ceramic dish. And these, at four inches, and some people get the three inch, I prefer the four inch, a little more water, a little bit better humidity in here. Uh, if I'm not here as, quite as often, it's less likely to need filled. I put that there at the front, just like that. And we're gonna fill that with water. Here's the other kicker. I guarantee you my hose head will fit right in that four inch perfect. I'm thinking about that kind of stuff, believe me. And easy to fill so I can just kind of go through and fill all of them up. Uh, that's going to provide enough humidity for your baby rack being full there. You'll still want to wet this. You don't want to start it that dry. I will set one of these up exactly how I'm going to do it so you can see. Uh, but that's going to do a great water dish. It's big enough that that snake can get in and have a soak as a hatchling and do what it wants. Not going to get stuck in there and provide enough water. Let me go grab my water dish. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So, when I want to set one of these up, 
Unfortunately, my mist setting, I've used a little too much. I just flung water on my face. That's great on camera. We would usually just kind of come through here and just mist that so it's a little bit wet like so, nothing too crazy. And then we're just gonna fill this up. My mist has turned into like a smaller jet. Kind of like, kind of like that. And that is gonna do everything we wanna do just perfect. So that tub right there would be ready for a baby snake. And you're gonna, it's gonna be a happy little baby snake in there. I don't know what else to tell you, that's perfect. So all of these tubs will get that exact same water dish. As you can see, we bought cases of them, uh, literally. And we do sell those at our shop. You can find those pretty easy, but hey, it's kind of whatever you want to do. Kurt, any questions about setting up a baby rack? What temperature? 90 degrees. That's an excellent question. We do set all of our ball pythons to 90 degrees. Uh, that's going to be 90 degrees in the back. A little cooler in the front, obviously. The longer, the more variants. The babies are going to eat pretty good if they're a little warm. Uh, but 90 is what we set it at. We don't want it any warmer than that. We don't really want it to be... Uh, much cooler though either so they get 90 they can cool off in the front and you can look too it's already doing a lot of good humidity there on the side so when we sprayed it it's going to be perfect um so yes right at 90 and again we use a uh herp stat set to a dimming so it can kind of just dial that in and kind of hold it right there without using too much power or overcooking it where it's getting too hot and too cold and too hot and too cold and having major swings anything else no all right guys thanks for watching We'll see y'all next week.